So let's take an example of a long uh, strangle scenario. Uh, we're going to look at the stock AZO. It's trading $231.90. Fari has associated with it a dollar weighted put call ratio of 4.5, which is very high. We have 30 days left because we're going to implement a strategy of a uh, November. And what we're going to try and accomplish here is trade the uh, buying the call no 240 strike and buying the put no 230. We are going to pay five dollars and seventy cents. You can see the Greeks related to each of the individual options. The call has a delta of 0.25, the volatility of 17.27, theta of 0.06, and a gamma of 0.03. The put has a price of four dollars with a negative delta of 0.43, volatility of 18.6, uh, theta of 0.08, gamma of 0.03. So we're going to pay a total of 570 for this long strangle. Our delta in this particular case, because we're buying the put, is going to be a negative 18 short, because we bought a call, which has a 25 positive delta, and we bought a put, which has a negative delta of 0.43. Obviously, the sum of the positive to the negative is minus 18. Now, our break-even points are simply the price of what we buy the strangle for versus the call, which is 240, so 245.70. And obviously, the price that we paid for the put to the downside of 224.30. So because we're spending $5.70 buying a 240, 230 strangle, we need the stock to move beyond, I say beyond, our break-even prices. 245.70 on the upside, which is 13.80 away or 224.30 on the downside, which is only 760. So you can see our goal here, obviously other than paying 8176 per day for this premium that we purchased, we're expecting the stock to have a downside move. Fari's looking at the possibly be around the 212 level. That's where he's looking for support. So that's an extreme move downward of about 19, 20 points, or an increase in vol. So when we look at uh, this strategy, uh, you want to see that uh, the options that we're participating in purchasing, you can see our call, it's highlighted in red on the 240 line, we're paying a uh, $1.70, and you can see our put is highlighted in red as the ask, we're paying four. So our total is 570. Now, when we create this strangle, as I indicated before, we benefit by the stock moving outside the ranges of our break-even points, which is simply the price that we paid for the strangle added to uh, the call on the upside or uh, obviously subtracted from the put on the downside. Now, what, what does that position look like when we uh, plot it out? Okay, this is what we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about um, the downside, okay, you can see that uh, the price of the stock is uh, 236 here uh, to roughly, uh, you see the green area represents that expiry. Uh, what's going to happen with our position at the different price points? Okay, so there is 230.22 on the downside. You can see we're losing, we're losing most of our, our, our investment because it still hasn't broken off from our range, which we talked, to, uh, talked about uh, as our break-even points. And uh, look at our upside. When we talked about we needed to get beyond uh, the 245.70 range. So when we look at this, uh, you can see that uh, here we are, um, okay, still incurring a loss. But what happens is when we get beyond our break-even points uh, at expiry, you can see now we're uh, going to get to a point where it's starting to finally break out and get some positive. Uh, this is just the upside. I minimize the upside as far as profit potential is because we're uh, focusing on the downside. Uh, our downside is uh, we're looking at a range of 212, basically, is the area in which Fari is hoping and think that we have a possibility to go to, and I'll let him explain that in the uh, charting. And you can see what happens at around the 212 level. Uh, this straddle is going to have a P&L of 10 grand for a 10 lot. You can see how it's expanded, and that's because the put is going to expand in price tremendously, and that call is going to uh, basically evaporate, but we're making out 
on the foot that we uh, purchased for four dollars. Now, if you look at the blue line, the blue line is basically looking at this uh, in a price as of last, of, as of today, end of day trading, and uh, the movement that would occur with the pricing of the strangle during the day. So you still see that you've got a little bit of a smile, which is what a long strangle is going to look like, just as much as a long straddle is going to look like. So you're buying volatility, so you get the benefit from the movement of the stock, uh, either up or down, and you're paying for that, which we talked about when we looked at uh, what was our decay. Uh, our decay here was $81.76. You can see our, break even, our breakout points on the downside, 224, and our upside, 245.70. So paying for that volatility means that we want the stock to move beyond the areas that we are looking for a breakout or breakdown in this case. Far, do you want to uh, go through the chart on ASIO to give them your analysis of why you think it's got a possibility to move and break down? Sure. All right, you should be seeing my screen now. Uh, I, I know this comment up there is sitting there. It's a part of um, Java, I think, the menus. Let's go to ASIO. And uh, we're talking about ASIO, correct? That is correct. All right. Uh, it has had a huge, huge, huge run-up. Uh, basically, the low you see there is uh, November of last year. So last 11 months have been a one straight run. Um, and given where we are in the market timing point of view, and you all know I went uh, flat on my long SPX with Timer Digest on uh, Monday night. Got confirmations early Saturday morning. I mean, early Tuesday morning yesterday. I emailed everybody on that. Given that sentiment I have, given that uh, I think almost everything is priced to perfection, uh, including ACO, I don't know when they're reporting, or maybe they already have recently. <clears throat> But based on what I'm looking at and the put call of all universe of our universe of data that we're looking at, this was a um, stock that could take a little bit of a reprieve here, if you will. And uh, my target was 212, which is the zero sigma on the weekly. Obviously, 239, 240 is where the problem is. That's the week uh, two sigma uh, weekly. If you look at the picture here, you'll see why. This is the monthly chart of uh, AZO. If that's not parabolic, I don't know what it is. So, you know, we, we've really, really gone up very fast. And, uh, it, you know, as you see here, like on monthly CI diffs, is slowing down. Look what volume is doing. This is not good news. Now, obviously, this tells, tells you there aren't too many sellers. I realize that. It's just really net new buyers kind of coming in. Very few people are selling because they like what they see. But uh, I uh, I don't like these pictures. I never do. You know, this this kind of run always gets into trouble. So that's it, sir. Steve, I'm back. Uh, based upon that, 212. Where's 212 here? Let's take a peek. All right, 213, 214, 212. Roughly right there is 212. So, you know, either on the expiry or uh, very near term, you can see that uh, our little 10 lot uh, strangle position has got a chance to make 12,000 uh, based upon the prices that we put that on because of the uh, expansion of that put. It's going to be obviously we're buying the uh, put, which is the 230 strike. So at 212, uh, its intrinsic value is going to be. Um, pretty hefty. Um, you're going to have uh, a, a value of close, obviously, to 18 bucks. What happens on the downside with this as well, and something that I want to show is that uh, besides uh, the movement being to our benefit, what possibly could happen here as well is um, you know what's going to happen with volatility. Uh, as we all know, as stocks go down and uh, volatility increases, uh, we get to take advantage of that. So uh, this is the volatility at 40. Let's let's jack up the volatility to 20% to 48, 
and, and, and see what we're going to look like there. And you can see how the, the line on the volatility curve went up. So, you know, including uh, the stock moving down to the 212 level and volatility increasing, uh, what could be very significant is a, a, a huge benefit because of volatility increasing as well uh, prior to expiration. So, you know, right there is uh, our 212, almost there. Around there is 212. So you can see that the P&L is pretty hefty at 19 grand because vol is going up, stock's going down. What I call a perfect storm when you're long a strangle. Uh, so in this particular case, being long the vol, uh, hopefully our prognostication being correct, uh, a good opportunity here. And we know what we're risking. We're long it. So our risk can only be what we paid for it. In this particular case, we're paying $5.70. Uh, we talked about what that erosion will be on a daily basis. It's going to be... $81.76, uh, $81.76 for this Telma. And what I'll show you is that, uh, you know, when Fari did his Google trade, and then we'll look at also Netflix vols, you'll see how these vols uh, wildly move prior to these earnings cycles. And in these high, high flyers, it's pretty significant. 